Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech, where I was just thinking about swapping out the thumpers on the Corsair for something else. I'm not entirely sure what else I want it to be. I was thinking maybe like Clan Ultra AC-10s or something. I'm not entirely sold on that. I haven't decided yet. I was thinking about maybe removing them and replacing them with a single long tom because th I I'm a little underwhelmed by it, obviously. But, uh... We don't have ammo for the long tom. I think we're going to leave it be for right now. I'm not super happy about it, but we'll we'll keep thinking about it for, for the moment. We'll, now, we do need to get repairs done here. It's going to take 23 days for the Annihilator and the Salamander to be fixed. That's going to be past our financial report, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and take forward here, get our Mech Warriors back. And we're going to hit this financial report. No problem there. A stock medium laser. Keep going. What do you get? Okay, he got an injury, but we also got a medium laser in tech. Cool. Now, he's going to be back in nine days. We're not going to deploy before that, so that's fine. Our financial report hits now. Our money is dwindling. There's no money about... or No, no money. No doubt about that. And the reason our money is dwindling, of course, is because we've kind of gotten a little unlucky with ro what Rogue Tech has been generating. It's been generating a lot of stuff. Now, I want to be able to deal with it, right? So we're just going to continue to progress here and tweak our mechs here and there. We're, we're going to get these repairs done. The longbow is going to be finished here in three days. Cool. So with that done, I want to make sure that the Annihilator is fine, so we're going to pause there. We've got 11 days left on our financial report, and looking at this, the Corsair is going to be done in 9. And then 6 and 4. Yes. We will be done in 11 days. So that's good. We're going to hop into the mech bay here, make sure everything else is good to go. It should be, in theory. You can do it, Rogue Tech. There we go. Okay, the Annihilator does actually need something. What does it need? It needs a repair on the HGR. So we'll go ahead and validate that. That'll be three days. That's a long time. No doubt about that. That is a very long time. I'll let you know when that's done. We'll place that right here, and let's see how this is going to look. Those three days will actually make things more complicated for us, but I think we'll be able to get this all done before the financial report. That's great. And of course, a big part of the reason that Rogue Tech has been throwing more at us is because I've been specifically choosing higher pay. That's something we may want to think about. We can establish a research partnership, and that's what we're going to do. Rain will be unavailable for 30 days. That's okay. We're going to deploy without him, of course. And we're going to continue to tick forward here for just these couple of days here that we need. Okay. The Corsair is still out. We tick one more day. Good. I should have checked the mech bay before I ticked that last day, but I don't think anything else took internal damage. Let's find out. Nope, we're good. Fantastic. So let's hop into the command center. Actually, the barracks first. We have to go into the barracks first because we do have some mech warriors who aren't maxed out yet. So let's hop into the barracks. And let's see what we've got here. Hi. Chronic Toast, are you ready to be maxed? Not quite. He's about halfway there. Poet, how are you doing? Ah, rank 10 gunnery. Beautiful. Do it. That's fantastic. And finally, Taboo. After this next mission, he's going to get another point. Great. Okay, so let's do something that is probably going to be a little on the simpler side. I mean, there's a six and a half skull. There's also this one. This is actually better in terms of pay for us. So we're going to do this battle, and this is against Word of Blake. So we have to assume there's going to be more enemies than normal, but this is two million sea bills. Let's go ahead and take that. We're going to be maybe a little bit backwards on this month, but I am hoping 
that we're gonna be absolutely fine here. Now, I do wanna work on the Corsair a little bit more. The thumpers are underwhelming. We're mostly just lacking the components that I want to put on the Corsair. So for now, we'll just go ahead and deploy this. That said, we could replace the chassis with some sort of an Aero 4 boat, but we'll do this for now. Darius thinks this will take more than what we've got. It should be fine. We should have no problems here. We are against Word of Blake, so we could be against as many as 12 enemy units, but I kind of don't expect that. It's six and a half skull. We may have allies as well, and our allies will be Comstar, so they will bring six units if we have allies. So we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping that it's just going to be the single enemy lance. I'm also hoping that we're not going to run into any en enemy aerospace fighters. Because that strafing hurt. Like, that was the majority of the damage, I feel like, that we took last time was the aerospace fighters. I mean, it's probably not true, but they contributed a lot, for sure. We probably took more damage from the actual mechs, but certainly towards the end of that, it, it was a lot. So I'm hoping that that was a one-time thing. We shouldn't run into them at this difficulty, but for now, we need to destroy the invading lance. We've detected an inbound dropship belonging to Word of Blake. Our local defense forces in the expected drop area are ill-equipped to handle a lance of mechs, but with your aid, we can ensure that the raid does minimal damage. We'd like you to intercept the Blakeish lance and destroy it. Commander, Word wouldn't send a dropship if they didn't mean business, so if we take this job, we should stay alert down there. Yeah, I am expecting two lances online. here. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. And let's go ahead and see what we've got. Command okay, so this is an awkward place to land. Yeah, they're up over there. We don't have allies. We could actually land up on this ridge, and this is a great spot to land. So we'll do exactly that. And what do we got? We only see the single enemy lance for now. Of course, it's a Blakist Lance, so there are six units. We see a Sorcerer, a Victor, a Longbow, a Longbow, a King Crab, and an Awesome. So, I mean, this is a full Assault Lance, no doubt about it, but we do have a numerical advantage right now. So we're going to position our Longbow here. We see a Rear Arc on this Awesome. I'm going to Warlord to boost our odds, which are not tremendous, but we can boost them quite a bit with Artemis 4 ammo. And we can fire Rear Arc on this awesome. There's a possibility that we can kill it here. Like out of that was a lot of heat sinks destroyed, and we took out a large laser there. But that was actually through armor. We didn't penetrate the armor, did we? No, we did. It just didn't update correctly. Okay. So the longbow shoots at our salamander, which is cover plus guarded. Now, they did get a head hit there, but we did resist the injury. Okay, so our Salamander is going to move in over here. We're going to go for the kill on that awesome. We do expect, I think, a kill here. Uh, we're definitely going to be better off in impro with improved MRMs. Here we go. That's a torso destruction there. That's a lot more heat sinks gone, as well as another large laser. We didn't quite destroy it but it's incredibly close. The longbow shoots at our salamander, as expected. We are in cover, so we take relatively minimal damage there. Also, this circle here, does that indicate the strafing run? Yeah. It might. The Corsair is going to move up here. Now, the Corsair is, of course, running thumpers, which is not necessarily ideal, but for right now, we're going to target this cluster of units with our artillery. So the longbow is the target here, and we're not going to use shape charges. We are going to direct fire on this longbow. Firing. We actually managed to hit this awesome over here. That's okay, I guess. But a little bit of armor damage over here. The sorcerer moves up and fires on our salamander. What's it rocking? PPCs. Okay. That's not as threatening as, like, the MRM-80 variant of the Sorcerer. That could have been far worse. Commander, Our Annihilator is going to move up over here. We would love to annihilate this awesome. 
Hit odds are not ideal, but they're not ideal anywhere over here. So we're going to Warlord and fire out at this awesome. Hopefully we don't stray shot our friend here. Firing at enemies. We didn't. We also didn't hit. That's fine. The Battlemaster is going to move up. We're still shooting at this awesome. I would love to eliminate it before it gets to move, and it moves next round. So if we don't kill it here, we don't kill it at all. And we don't kill it at all. No hit set. However, we did eliminate roughly half of its armament there. Okay, its stray shots are annihilator. That's fine. Light damage. Holding firm. Completely okay there. Hey there. So the Mad Cat is going to move up over here, and we're just going to fire at whatever our hit odds are best at now that this awesome has turned back around. 38%. 23, 44 on this longbow over here. We're going to warlord that, and we're going to armor strip this longbow. Cool. Pretty good armor taken off there. Phase 13 is the king crab. This could hurt. We'll see what it does. Okay. That could have gone far worse. They're definitely focusing that salamander pretty hard. The AI likes to do that these days, I've definitely noticed. The bull shark is going to move up, and we are going to fire on the longbow over here. Actually. We've kind of got two clusters here. This one is closer for our direct fire. Maybe we should start focusing our artillery back here. May I interest you in some melting armor? Okay. Decent damage to that sorcerer. I hear ya. The boar's head will step up, and we're also going to be direct firing on this sorcerer. Firing everything I've got. Solid hits there. Only a little bit of damage out over this way, but that's a knockdown on the sorcerer, I think. Not quite. Okay, so phase 18. Who do they move? They are going to move this longbow. And that's fine. The longbow is going to fire on our Battlemaster. I like it. I'm glad that they shot at the, the Battlemaster instead of our Salamander. Confirmed. Our longbow is going to move up over here. We can fire at any of these. Now, the Sorcerer is going to move next round, as is the Victor and the Longbow. Get odds are best on the Longbow, and this is actually also Side Arc. So I guess we'll take this. Affirmative. LRM ammo explosion, the longbow's out of here. I like it. The victor moves up, doesn't shoot. Strangely. Our salamander is going to step in over here. And I'm also going to vigilance the salamander. It's taken a pretty good amount of armor damage there. That's for sure. We could AX round the king crab. Now, we don't have Warlord. But I think we AX the King Crab. Target acquired. That is a huge amount of damage into that King Crab. His armor is dramatically weakened. The Sorcerer moves up, shoots at our Battlemaster. That's okay. I'm losing armor left and right. You're okay for now. Losing lots of armor. Okay, so that King Crab... Mostly lost his armor in those torsos. I'm here. Cool. So the Corsair is going to move up over here. King Crab doesn't move until phase 11. I think that we're going to continue to shoot at this cluster out over here. So we're going to shoot at this Victor. Aye, aye. We missed one of our Thumper rounds. The other hit. So that's okay. The Awesome closes in. The Awesome is a lot less threatening than it used to be. No damage into the Salamander there. So that's excellent. Next yes, up is our Battlemaster. Or do we move anyone else this round? No, just our Battlemaster. So we're going to move up over here. My way. And we can fire on that King Crab. I think that that's probably going to be our best bet. Yes, it is. So we're going to fire on the King Crab. And we're going to hope to get some ammo explosions or something. Here. That is an ammo explosion. So we took out one of its AC-20s and knocked it down. That's huge. This King Crab is not doing so well. 
So next up, our Annihilator could move. I'm actually wanting to move our Mad Cat for the moment. And we're going to position the Mad Cat out over here. This is not in cover. So we're actually going to position it here. And 44%. The Longbow is the target. We'll soften that up a bit. And let's see what we want to do about that. I mean, the real question at this point is, who do we have finish off the King Crab, right? Yes, Commander. Now, the Annihilator can move up. On let's check move. the hit odds on it. 35%. And that's the best through this firing corridor. I don't want to stray shot our Salamander. I'm not going to fire that, just going to fire the variable speed pulse laser. Pilot ejection. Beautiful. That was the right call. Okay, so the Bull Shark is going to step up over here. The obvious target is still this Victor for our artillery. We'll go ahead and fire on that. That was a fantastic hit there. Okay, that's a knockdown on the Sorcerer. And the victor is now unsteady. What can I do the boar's you? head is going to step over here, trying to clear some firing lines. We're going to keep shooting at the victor. Incredibly solid hit there. What, the more? It could have gone better, to be sure. But that's fine. So, phase 29, they don't move until phase 16. Our salamander can close in off over this direction. Now, we can actually hit the sorcerer with AX. It doesn't have that much armor left. And actually, I think we're better off using improved here. Because we get more internal damage, and that's a kill on the sorcerer. Three enemies remain. Watch my heat. So they're going to immediately move their longbow here. And that fires on our Battlemaster. Doesn't get a single hit. Okay. Fascinating. So our Corsair is kind of popping out over here. We could go for the Victor, which still has his AC-20. We could go for the Awesome, which isn't super threatening, or the longbow, which is still a little threatening. I think we go for the victor here because we want to take it out. We don't want it to use that AC-20 if we can help it. Two really mediocre shots. Okay. The victor moves up, shoots at AC-20, but it does not hit the salamander. So that doesn't matter. That's completely fine. And now the longbow is a fantastic artillery target. Yep. Our longbow is going to step up and is in fact going to fire on the awesome because we are not interested in eliminating any artillery targets at this time. So that's a lot of armor damage to the awesome, and in fact, some decent internal damage there. Did we break through the CT? No, we did not. Okay. So the Battlemaster is going to move up, and for the same reason, is going to hit the awesome. A lot more armor damage into a pilot ejection. Beautiful. The Mad Cat Mark II, I'm actually going to reserve. Awaiting orders. I'm going to reserve the Annihilator as well. Confirmed. I want to move the Bull Shark and the Atlas next. So the Bull Shark will step forward and fire on this Longbow. Not a great Long Tom shot there. It was a direct fire without a backstop, so that was a possibility. Waiting on you, the Boar's Head is going to also shoot at the Longbow. All weapons? That's a good hit. And an okay hit. Cool. And that was a pilot ejection, actually, over here. So that's beautiful. The Annihilator is going to step up, and we have good hit odds on the longbow. This is a very likely kill. Firing all weapons. Score to critical hit. And he's out of here. Another ejection. Mission that was really successful. good. That was quite simple, and we didn't take that much damage. The Salamander took a chunk to be sure. But no one else really did, and it should be pretty fine to repair. I don't think that'll be a huge problem.
that should be a quite profitable mission, even if we are still net negative for the month, which I think we will be because we took so much damage in the previous couple of missions. But this one wasn't bad. Not bad at all. We got an extra 50,000, I guess. The Battlemaster is going to take some repairs as well. That's completely acceptable. Salvage wise. King Crab part? King Crab part. Okay. LRM5, FTL, ammo. We actually got four King Crab parts there. No, that's awesome. Never mind. <laughs> that would have been amazing. And I want to check, actually, once we get into the mech bay here, I want to check to see if that king crab can actually be put together. I think we had some king crab parts already. That would actually be a fantastic replacement for the Corsair. And I would love to have that happen. That buy us another couple of tons. And more importantly, better hard points. So let's take a look at what we've got available there. Do king crabs have... I didn't look. Do they have missile hard points? That's something we need to look into. So let's, let's let this load in, see what the damage is. I don't expect it to be too much. What do you got for us, Yang? 100k, 17 days. I don't think it'll actually be 17 days. We have two days on the financial report, of course. It'll be longer than that. Yeah, it'll actually be eight days. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. We are going to have to take this financial report. Definitely. However, that mission did get us basically the amount that we needed for that. Let's hop into the mech bay here and check on the king crab situation. What do we got going on here? Okay, so we need to go into components as soon as it finishes loading here. No, storage. I was right the first time. Come on, Rogue Tech. You can do it. I'm rooting for you. There we go. Okay, did we have any King Crab parts? Let's see. I mean, we could potentially... No, that's Fafnir 2s and Fafnirs. Okay. That's a little sad. Uh, there is... Just these two king crab parts, and it does have one missile hard point. Fascinating. We could actually ready this Fafnir, the 5X. I'm going to wait until after the month tick. So we're going to tick forward two days. Ready to go over financials whenever you are. There we go. And we'll accept that. And then I do think we want to ready that Fafnir. What do we want it to be? I don't want it to be another heavy Gauss boat. We've already got two of those. I think it will be a replacement for the Corsair. So let's hop into the mech bay again. And it's going to take some time to get it ready. I won't expect it to be ready this month for sure. It's going to be maybe a little expensive too. I don't know if we really want this to happen this month but a solid corsair replacement wouldn't be bad now i wouldn't necessarily mind it being a frontline mech also like supporting the salamander we'll go ahead and do that that's 141,000 seat bills right there but let's think about what we might want this to be i i don't know about the heavy gausses that said well Let's hop into the back bay and see what it's got right now. So, if we go into the refit... And we hit the repair button... How much does that cost on its own? Okay. So, there is an H improved HGR on here. Good to know. What is the default engine on this? Engine Core 300? Okay. Now, if we were going to have this in the front here. I would like to have Pharaoh Lamellar armor on it. Case armor can't be used with case. Yeah, of course not. We would drop the case. Pharaoh Lamellar and then drop the improved HGR and the heavy Gauss ammo. Drop the two ER mediums for now and just max that armor. Then, of course, we would need the Engine Core 300. And what kind of speed are we looking at there? Three to four. What if we were to run an engine core 400? That's basically the entire weight of the mech right there. And that gets us to four and six. Yeah, hard pass on that. 
So we're going to run something like this. Excellent. Now, it's running double heat sinks by default and stealth armor. We could run an engine heat sink plus two. That's not a terrible concept. And we almost certainly do want to run DHS on this. Like so. Then, what if we were to run... I mean, UAC-20s would be hilarious if we were able to run dual UAC-20s. If we were able to get in close enough to use them, right? That's going to be the main problem there. And we don't actually have U UAC-20s, do we? Actually, we do. I mean, that would be insane. That would be insane. And then if we were able to run, like, ELRMs... <laughs> oh, boy. ELRMs would actually be amazing. What's the tonnage on those? 14. That's a lot of tonnage. So it would be something like this. We'd have to free up a lot of weight. And I would also like to run at least some form of backup weapon. Like ER medium lasers. In the arms here. We only have the one ER medium? Really? Okay. I guess so. But then just like a medium laser in tech over here. Something along the lines of this would be ideal. Now, this is 20 tons overweight. No doubt about that. We could put in, like, clan endo steel structure. That would save us five tons. And we would also need ammo in this, too. So we'd need some LRM ammo, and we would probably want to do... Let's see, that's damage fall off. We probably want to run something along the lines of just generic LRM ammo. Something along the lines of two tons of that. So this is 40 per turn. So each of these is three turns. So that's six turns of LRM ammo. And then the AC-20s, that, like the UAC-20 ammo, that's going to be interesting. Do we even have it? Probably. We do. We have some... It's some double UAC ammo. Having the LRM ammo in the CT isn't necessarily the best idea. But this is cased ammo. Or cased. So we could potentially have it, like, out in these arms. Because our armor is cased. And then have, like, this. This would be ideal. Now we're wildly overweight. <laughs> that's for sure. However, this would get us... Let's see, that's 12 shots. So this is... 12 turns of ammo here. Keep in mind, each of these use two. So we're using four per turn. So this is three turns and six turns. It's actually six turns of ammo. So the Fafnir does a lot of damage, right? But it's pretty ammo limited. Now, we could theoretically drop off the ELRMs. Or go to ELRM 15. That's another option. That would shave off four tons per ELRM and give us more turns of ammo. So that would be eight tons of savings overall. I feel like that's probably going to be what we have to do. Because how else are we going to get the weight savings? I mean, if we want to spend the cash, we could always run like a uh, engine XL. Even that puts us four tons overweight, and we have no available slots beyond that. So we still need to drop four tons off of this thing. Even with the XL engine. Okay. And our heat efficiency is in the toilet, obviously. <laughs> so that's a thing, too. We could run the heat exchanger. That'll help a lot. And, I mean, we would definitely want something like a sensor sentinel but that doesn't help the weight what if instead of the elrms we were to drop these and instead go for like mrms that might be worthwhile weight wise i do want to take a look here i want things that just increase the generic gunnery if at all possible 
Energy accuracy, breaching, blood sport, Artemis. I mean, Artemis would be okay if we were missile focused, right? But if we were to put in, like, say, dual MRM 20s, we don't have two MRM 20s. An MRM 20 and an MRM are actually just a single MRM 20. That could work. We would need ammo for it. We wouldn't need much MRM ammo. This is saved. We probably don't need saved ammo. Uh, this would give us 240 shots. That's quite a bit of time. So we'd still have a tiny bit of tonnage remaining here. Our heat efficiency is not amazing, but this is assuming that we're firing our ER mediums. Or just the ER medium. Yeah. So if we're not firing those, then that's fine. We can turn those off. Or we can take our UAC 20s down to 1x. The real question is, does this get in range? If it gets in range, it's going to do a lot of damage. This is 400 plus the MRMs plus the uh, ER mediums. It's just a lot of damage. Like 550 total damage. 600 in melee range. Yeah, that's, that's insane. Our heat efficiency is not the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. And we do want to get better sensors and FCS in this, for sure. So let's see what we've got for our FCS. Now, we could go for... I mean, this is just an evasion ignore. And bonus chance to deal a crit. And minus one recoil. You know what? Let's do it. We'll put on a flak FCS. And then for our cockpit... I mean, we could get better sensor and sight range. I guess that's okay. And then for our sensors... We don't have a lot of option here. We could just take the initiative, I guess. Oh, requires direct neural interface. Never mind. We're not going to be DFAing. So honestly, none of this is available for us right now. That's a little sad, but that's okay. And our durability is going to be, like, super duper good. So that's fantastic. I think overall this will do. I would like to use that quarter ton. But what are we going to do with it, right? I mean, we could put in some form of an AMS, but that's not going to be great. A tag is one ton. A light tag is half a ton. I mean, we could put in a, like, chainsaw or an arc welder or something, but uh, we're probably not going to be meleeing. And yeah, it needs a free hand for that. Probably needs a hand for Hammer Fist as well. Yeah, two free hand actuators. So that's not going to be a thing. I think we're just going to call this good. It is expensive, and we're going to spend the money right now. We don't necessarily have the money, but that Fafnir, that's going to want to get in there. And fairly close. It's not fast, but it is a bit of a juggernaut. So that's going to go in with our MRM mechs. I mean, it's got an MRM of its own. So that's a thing, and we'll just have that be top priority for now. It is, however, a little past time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to work on getting those mechs ready to go and deploy again, because we need to make money this month. It has to happen. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.